Secure access to critical infrastructure. So we all know about usernames and passwords and we use them you know, most of the time. Um, every now and then you have systems like that ask you for, hey, I'm gonna send you a text message with a, um, an, a number. That's called two-factor authentication. So not only do you have a username and a password, but you have two-factor authentication, which more and more systems are deploying because we realize that username password and password does not provide enough protection. But again, when you take the example of your um, movies stored in a drawer and your diamonds stored in the safe, the protection that I put on my Gmail isn't really enough to protect remote access to a nuclear power plant. You'd really want a little bit more protection in that case. And so hardware-based authentication or multi-factor authentication is essential for critical systems. And the issues with uh, two-factor authentication, like what I have on my Gmail, is that first of all, you can access the web service provider bypassing the validation. You can bypass the validation service or you can emulate the, the device. So in other words, how does my phone, how does the system know that my phone is me because it sent me a text? But if somebody can emulate my phone, then the hacker can receive the text and log into the system. And so while these systems, again, are enough to protect my Gmail, they actually have a lot of places to be hacked. And so we introduced our devices before so our uh, FIPS Level 3 mini HSM client can be used as um, the authentication device and our vault can be used as the validation server. And in this case, the client can't be hacked. This, our our um, HSM is much, much more secure and harder to emulate or virtually impossible to emulate when compared to a phone, can't be emulated. Um, you can do what we call multi-client author authorization, which we're going to see now. And the rules, this is a very important thing. When you check, when I send in my, my text, you need to compare the text I sent in to the one that the server had. But let's say you hack the server and so the comparison is hacked. Then the rule is executed, but not securely. And that bypasses the whole validation and so you really want the rules themselves to be executed inside a secure environment and not in a general purpose computer. And most important, what you see on the mini screen of the, of the mini HSM is what you approve. The screen of a telephone or a computer being used for access can be hacked. So you could, the screen could show you A, but it really you'd be approving B. And that is a, a, something we want to avoid Hence, the display is on the secure device itself. In our case, the system would do user ID and password login. Then you would validate the user ID. The authenticated challenge would be sent to a secure device and the authentication response would be provided. This is the regular way of going through two-factor authentication. In this case, it's a very secure method of two-factor authentication. But then we have another level. Even after you've passed the authentication, you want an approver to approve that access. So let's go to our power plant. We have a technician who's authorized and he's allowed to get in. Even after that technician passes approval, we want an internal approver to approve that that technician is still working with the company, didn't steal the device, it was still online, and he's still working in the hours that he's allowed to be there. And so you can go through approval of approvals. This is called multi-factor authentication, which is the best way to protect access to critical infrastructure. And only then, after the approver approves the access, will the access be allowed into the system. 